Hello, one and all, and welcome to my review of last night's episode of Monday Night Raw. We are going to be taking a look at the November 2nd edition of WWE Raw that took place from Denver, Colorado. And overall, I can say from my standpoint, um, I enjoyed last night's episode of Raw. I thought it was, um, once again, uh, a solid show. To me, this has been you know a long time since I've been able to say that I've enjoyed two weeks of Raw back to back, and uh, the show, you know, overall was was fresh. There were some good matches, some good promos, storytelling, and it it overall led to a good show, in my opinion. So let's take a look at what took place throughout the night and what led to this show. Um, in my eyes, being considered good. So, the first thing that happened, uh, we had Roman Reigns make his way to the ring. And, um, you know, he said that he's coming for Seth Rollins, he's gunning for him, and uh, he will take that WWE Heavyweight Championship from him. However, Seth Rollins made his way out. And it looked like, you know, they were going back and forth verbally, and then Reigns egged Rollins to come into the ring. He's like, come on, you want to fight right now? Rollins was going to make his way to the ring. Then the authority showed up, and they said that in two weeks, Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns will happen for the WWE Heavyweight Championship at the Survivor Series pay-per-view. So that match was officially announced. Then they made another announcement tonight. Reigns... Team Reigns versus Team Rollins, a traditional 5-on-5 five -five Survivor Series elimination match, with both guys being able to pick their teammates. So I was excited for that, a fresh, different main event. I mean, that's the pattern that we saw throughout this show, in my opinion. So, um, you know, the, the segment, it didn't you go on too long. Reigns, you know, he said what he had to say. Uh, Rollins said what he had to say. The authority made their um, presence and set up the main event. So this segment was, I, I, I felt it was okay. It was effective and it established uh, what would take place later on um, in the show. Then we had our first opening contest. It was uh, Kevin Owens versus Dolph Ziggler. I thought this was a good match. Um, Owens really worked over the leg of Ziggler, the left leg of Dolph Ziggler, throughout the match. And um, eventually... Um, not even halfway through the match, Tyler Breeze made his entrance uh, with Summer Rae, and they uh, made their way to his VIP section, and uh, Summer was uh, you know, feeding Tyler grapes throughout the match. And what I didn't realize is that Tyler, while in the VIP section, um, was shooting a live video stream that could be seen on his Facebook page. So that's pretty cool, something you know, different. I didn't even know that was happening until uh, after it was over. But uh, they were at ringside, and um, you know, Owens and Ziggler were having a, a pretty good match. Uh, Ziggler tried to get a to make a comeback, but um, Breeze was able to distract Ziggler, and it led to Owens capitalizing and hitting the pop up power bomb for the win. Afterwards, Breeze gets in the ring. Uh, he he wants to do a, a selfie. Um, over the fallen Dolph Ziggler, Dolph gets back up, um, looks like he's going to make, uh, he's finally going to get his re revenge on Tyler Breeze, and then Breeze hits him with the beauty shot, and him and Summer, uh, take selfies over the prone body of Dolph Ziggler, so I like this, it was a good match, made Owens look strong, continued the developing feud between Ziggler and Breeze, this is a rivalry that I really wanted to see, see for a long time now, feel like both guys, you know, they really complement each other. You know, Ziggler and Breeze kind of look similar. You know, they I think they would mesh well together um, as a feud, as opponents, and I think it would be smart to hold off on Breeze's first official match until Survivor Series. Save it for that show and make it something special. So I'm glad they're they're probably going that route. And um, this was a, a good good highlight from the show. 
then we had Cesaro uh, versus The Miz. Not too much to say about this match, except Cesaro got a nice reaction from the crowd. The Cesaro section is growing. You need to push Cesaro because this guy is so talented. He can he could he could really raise the bar. And um, you know what can I say? Cesaro is just awesome. And he started hitting his uh, uppercuts on the Miz, and um, then he um, swung the Miz for 23 uh, consecutive rotations in the giant swing, and then locked in the sharpshooter for the win. So not much about this match, but the swinging the Miz around and hitting the uppercuts that that really got the crowd behind Cesaro, and they definitely need to be doing more with Cesaro heading into uh, 2016. So it was good to see Cesaro get the win. Tap out victory with the sharpshooter. Then we had the Wyatt family um, make their way to the ring, and um, they um, they announced. Um, well, Bray was the one speaking in the ring, and um, he said that he now had the powers of the Undertaker and Kane. He has now consumed their souls. And um, he was able to demonstrate this by making the lights flicker on and off and having lightning uh, strike the corner post and um, Kane's uh, four corner post pyro hit. Then um, fireworks went off on the uh, display stage and all the while Bray was you know, posing in the Undertaker's signature um, fashion with the one knee down and the hand extended. And then a video played. It showed, you know, all the highlights of Kane and The Undertaker, you know, as the Brothers of Destruction and what they were able to do. And then the video just slowly you know, faded away. And then it showed, went back to Wyatt and it showed him laughing maniacally. And he said, follow the buzzards. So uh, we're definitely going to be getting a, a team, Team Wyatt versus uh, the Wyatt family versus... Uh, Taker and Kane, and I don't know if it'll be five on five or four on four, but I can't wait for this match. And I thought, you know, Bray really, really did a tremendous job tonight. Uh, once again, on the microphone, the Wyatt family feel like dominant villains again, and uh, it'll be interesting to see when Kane and the Undertaker make their returns. Will it be next week or the following week, or might we not see them till Survivor Series? Who knows? But I really enjoyed this segment and uh, just made the Wyatt family look. That much more like dominant villains. So uh, good job in this promo. Very good job. And then we had a match that I wasn't really expecting too much out of. But it was the Lucha Dragons taking on uh, the new team of King Barrett and Sheamus. And uh, before this match they played a nice little um, video package on the Lucha Dragons. Which I appreciated because the Lucha Dra Dragons excuse me, are awesome. And I feel like they haven't really gotten a fair end of the deal when it comes to the main roster. And I felt like after this win tonight the crowd was that much more behind them. And uh, the Lucha Dragons came out of this match. You know, they, they did win. But um, they had a great showing. They really hit a lot of their um, high flying offensive um, moves. Uh, Barrett and Sheamus, uh, I thought, also um, looked good, how they were trying to establish themselves as um, a new tag team, and I think they could work well as a tag team. And these guys, I thought they, they put on a, a better match than I, I thought I was expecting. They were given enough time, and, um, you know, Barrett and Sheamus, they, they used their... Um, their rough and tumble grounding offense against the high flying Lucha Dragons, and it really worked well, you know, to, to, to throughout the match, such as when you know Sin Cara was was getting you know destroyed by whoever was Sheamus Barrett didn't matter, and then eventually he was able to get that hot tag um, to Callisto, and um, yeah, Callisto is just fun and awesome to watch the way he flies around that ring doing his high octane moves. And uh, he was able to get the victory with uh, Salida Del Sol uh, on Barrett. So um, the Lucha Dragons picked up the victory, and this was a, 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 a good match. And, you know, I hope b bigger and better things are ahead for the Lucha Dragons. And, yeah, it was a good match, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, then we had R-Truth versus Alberto Del Rio. 
um, before the match, there was a backstage promo um, with uh, Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger showed up uh, at his return, I guess. And he said, uh, "What's going on here? You know, we were we were enemies with this with this guy for so long. Now you're all buddy buddy." And Coulter was like, "Look, up, that's in the past. You know, it's about Mex America and about uniting and and being together as one." And then uh, Del Rio showed up, and uh, him and Swagger kind of exchanged some words, and um, that was interesting. Um, I'm not sure if that will lead to. Uh, rekindling of their rivalry with the roles reversed or swagger would be joining uh, Coulter and Del Rio but um, it was an interesting backstage promo and um, afterwards Del Rio took on our truth nothing really much to say about this match I thought truth got in a little bit more offense than I was comfortable comfortable with I thought Del Rio should have just you know kicked his ass and been done with him um, but he was able to pick up the victory and that makes sense he was able to get the victory with the uh uh, corner double double stomp for the uh, pinfall. So, yeah, nothing much to say about that match. Probably the lowest point of the show overall. Uh, then we had a match, a fatal four way match that was given enough time. You know, I, it was it was really good, and I'm, I'm glad these women, these four women, got this opportunity. It was um, Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks versus Paige, versus Brie Bella, to determine a new number one contender for Charlotte's Divas Championship at Survivor Series. And before the match, the boss, Sasha Banks, cut a promo in the back, and um, she was on fire tonight, um, pretty much saying that this this is hers for the taking, and that she's going to do whatever it's going to take um, to become the number one contender. And these four women... Uh, put on a, a really good match. One of the better matches I've seen from the women on the main roster. Um, some of the highlights was um, when Brie Bella, you know, she actually got a good amount of offense in on this match that I was surprised about. She th threw those uh, flurry of uh, Daniel Bryan kicks on, you know, Becky, uh, Sasha, and Paige. Eventually, there was um, a really, really nice spot where... Um, you know, all four women um, were on the, I think it was Becky who was on the top rope, and um, Sasha was up there as well, and they did this Tower of Doom spot where they all, you know, flipped, they all did this huge suplex type move off the top rope, and the crowd really loved it, sorry if I'm not really explaining it that well, go and watch it, uh, it was it was really cool to see. Um, and, uh, you know, Becky looked good in this match. I thought all women got an opportunity to, uh, shine. You know, Sasha looked really good. Uh, her and Becky had some moments. They went back and forth together, um, in the match. Uh, it took me back to their, uh, their classic matches in NXT, so it was great seeing them in the ring again together. And, um, you know, it looked like, um, Sasha was going to get the win with the bank statement towards the end of the match. Um, however, Paige was able to toss Sasha out of the ring and hit the rampage on back, um, two banks to get the pinfall victory. So, Paige is your new number one contender for Charlotte's Diva Championship. Um, and like I said, this really was the benefit to all four women involved. And I'm glad that Paige won. Uh, I got that prediction right in my match card. A video for Survivor Series. I think her and Charlotte will have a hell of a match. And afterwards, uh, Paige said anyone that uh, cheers for Charlotte is pretty much a loser and that she will be the new Divas champion. And then Charlotte um, cut a backstage promo um, you know, with her thoughts on what uh, Paige said and she pretty much was disgusted with it. She said, um, doesn't, you know, She's not trying to live off her father's legacy. She's going to do what she's going to be able to do because she's that damn talented. And uh, she's going to hold on to that Divas Championship and uh, not fall to Paige. So I like the intensity from Charlotte's promo. And I feel like this could be a very good feud to help move the women's uh, division in the right direction. After it's been, you know, feel like it's been stuck in a rut for so long. So 
Charlotte versus Paige. I'm looking forward to it at Survivor Series. And then we had our main event of the evening. Very fun main event. It was a traditional Survivor Series 5-on-5 five -five elimination match with um, Team Reigns taking on the members of Team Rollins. And earlier on in the night, uh, Big E and Kofi um, you know, lobbied Seth Rollins to allow them to be on his team. And uh, Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens um, in the first hour of Raw had a backstage promo. And Rollins was like, you know what? I like a championship versus championship match at WrestleMania. Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. What do you think? And Owens is like, sure. Uh, I, I really like that match. I think it would be great. And then Rollins is like, well, what do you think about you being on my team tonight? And Owens agreed to it. And uh, then we found out that Xavier Woods returned. So Rollins' team was going to be made up of the three members of the New Day, Big E, Kofi, and Xavier, and Kevin Owens, uh, versus Roman Reigns' team. So um, Roman Reigns made his way to the ring and um, found out that the Usos made their return tonight. So that was great to see. Missed seeing the Usos. They're one of my favorite tag teams in WWE. Finally glad to have them back. Makes sense that they would team up with Roman Reigns. And um, Ryback and Dean Ambrose were the last two teammates. And this match, you know, it went about uh, 30 minutes. Got a, got a good amount of time. I thought everybody was able to, um, you know, work well against each other. It didn't feel like it was rushed. And uh, the first uh, person that was eliminated was Xavier Woods after he ran into one of the Usho's big splashes. And... Um, and Kofi Kingston was eliminated by the Usos as well. So, uh, yeah, just like that, Kofi and uh, Xavier were out of the match. Then um, Big E later on in the match was able to eliminate Jay Uso by hitting the, uh, the big ending. And uh, Owens was able to eliminate um, Jimmy Uso with the pop-up powerbomb. So uh, the match was uh, pretty even here. You had Owens, Biggie, and Rollins versus Ryback, Ambrose, and Reigns. So it was even three on three. Ryback finally gets into the match. He's uh, clearing house. Um, Biggie was eliminated uh, by Ryback once he hit that shell shock, and then Rollins was uh, able to hit the pedigree, eliminating Ryback. Then it was down to Rollins. By himself versus Reigns and Ambrose. And Ambrose took a good amount of punishment in this match. Um, but eventually, um, he was able to, you know, hit uh, Dirty Deeds. You know, Owens. It was down to Rollins and Owens. Sorry if I'm not doing a great job explaining this. It was down to Rollins and Owens versus Reigns and Ambrose. And this was a great part of the match. Uh, Owens was just uh, beating up on Ambrose, and then he held his face up to Rollins, and he's like, you're not good enough, Ambrose. That's what Rollins was saying. You're not good enough. And then Rollins was just, he made a flurry offense, made that comeback, and he's able to hit dirty deeds on Kevin Owens to eliminate him. And then it was down to um, Ambrose and Reigns, and their team, versus Rollins, who was the last man for his team. And uh, it didn't look good for Rollins. I was wondering how he was going to get his way out of this. Uh, however, uh, when he made his way, they were outside the ring, and then Rollins grabbed a chair, hit Ambrose with it, and that led to the uh, disqualification. Uh, Rollins hit Reigns and Ambrose with a couple chair shots and then uh, put Reigns in the ring. looked like he was going to destroy him with the chair. Reigns was able to get up, hit Rollins with a Superman punch, and led to him... Uh, running away from the ring, so that's how we ended Raw, uh, really fun main event match, overall I thought it was a good show, um, so I'm going to give this show a B+, that's my grade for this week's Raw, a B+, I enjoyed this week's episode, looking forward to next week's episode as well, and hopefully the build for Survivor Series continues, because I thought so far it's been fantastic, it really has been one of the better builds to a pay-per-view uh, this year. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Monday Night Raw. Thank you all for watching this video. Uh, please click that like and subscribe button to see more video content coming to this channel. And yes, uh, that's it with my Raw review. Once again, thank you all for watching. Have a
great day and peace.